Welcome back guys, Sly Bacon here, DLC announcement time, of course, Realm of the Wood Elves. The kids are at school, we've finally got a chance to sit down and watch these, so we've got both videos up, we'll go through both of them, and then we'll have a look at the Steam page and have a look at a bit more in-depth of what we're going to actually get. So let's start this, pop that full screen, Sly. So this is the announcement trailer first up. Sega. He's very elf looking, isn't he? <laughs> the deep wood stirs. The chill winds of winter. Oh, they look very cool. And the season of war is here. Oh, the eagles are here. The Asri are hunters. Oh, what? Is that flying ranged? And the forest is oh, I love those shields, those are cool. Stag cavalry, of course, yes, yes. Eagles. Woe betide those foolish enough to threaten it. Ah, uh, Trents, is it? And Dryads there as well, I think. Those little ones are dryads. There have been sacrifices. But we are ready. He is ready. The wild hunt begins! Okay, that was short. <laughs> I was expecting that to be a bit longer than that. Right, when are we out? Oh, December the 8th. That's not far away at all, is it? Not at all. Alrighty, let's um, watch this one here. So this is 5 Minutes of Total War Warhammer Wood Elf's Gameplay by Eurogamer. Hello, this is Chris Wright from Eurogamer, and there's some new DLC Oh, it's on Dragon. Oh, we instantly get a Dragon. Oh, awesome. Total War Warhammer. It's all about the Wood Elves, as you can see. And so that's the Stag Cavalry. I think that's the Dryads. And that's a big forest dragon. With that's... Trents, I guess. Trents. A dragon with antlers. That's that's ridiculous. But I quite like it. A legendary lord, I would guess, and two lords or hero units. That looks like a um Sprite, that's what I'm gonna say, yeah, isn't um, that's obviously another yeah. legendary lord, but one that's more focused on range. Awesome. So this is similar to the Call of the Beastman pack that you might remember from a little while ago, which means the wood elves are being introduced to every. I love the look of these. Tree uh, things. It looks Whether so not cool. The DLC. That dragon as looks amazing as well. Race. However, if you do own it, you'll be able to play as them, and you'll also be able to unlock a uh, a separate mini campaign with a more strong objective is on a different map. I imagine, although I haven't actually seen the mini campaign in action. Oh, I love the way they I've run. Seen and played for myself is this quest battle that you're watching. They run like you expect stags to actually races. run. That's cool. Bunch of nasty beastmen. Some of them with like this weird bubble mechanic, which makes them invulnerable for a certain amount of time. Hope that doesn't make too much of an appearance in this game because that is that is brutal. Um, anyway, let's talk about the the roster itself. I do know quite a bit about the Wood Elves because the people that made it have explained a bunch of this stuff to us already. The Wood Elves can really be split into two separate parts when you're looking at their their roster. You've got the the elves themselves, so the guys with those pointy ears, really good at archery, hiding that kind of thing, and then you've got the tree folk, which are the bigger, sort of usually more tanky units, which can actually stand up for themselves in like melee combat, as you saw there, which is useful. Uh, however, the, the Wood Elves have some of the most versatile ranged units in the game, without a doubt. Uh, and more than that, they introduced some gameplay mechanics that we just haven't seen in a Total War game before, uh, the entire series. Like, so for example, every single Wood Elf Archer can move and fire simultaneously. What? Some of them have a move and fire? Oh my god, that's going to be annoying. Some of them can remain hidden what? whilst firing. I think that's limited Sorry, what to did he say? a certain type of radius. Some of them every single wood elf archer can move and fire simultaneously. Some of them have a 360 degree firing radius. 
360 degree firing radius, oh my Some god. Some of them can remain hidden whilst firing. I think that's limited to a certain type of hero unit called the Waystalker, but maybe there's there's more examples of that. Remain and hidden while firing? That, Jesus. Your archers can be equipped with specialized ammunition, which means you can give them longer range, you can uh, have their arrows apply a fire or poison effect, or you can... Um, oh, look at that. One, which I think is called That must be the poison shot, effect. Which basically hits multiple targets with every arrow and means it's good really Lord, good taking it. out large groups of uh, units. There's, there is so much versatility to this force. And yeah, if you're good at, if you're even half good at micromanagement in a Total War game, or if you just like to pause a lot, this army can achieve loads. However, as I found out during this quest battle, when it comes to melee combat, a lot of those troops are incredibly squishy. We've got a lot of kind of glass cannon units going on here. So, the Treath Oak, which you mentioned which earlier... Which is what we were expecting from the Wood Elves, anyway. Them. However, this is an important thing about these two halves of the of the roster. Depending on which legendary lord you pick, uh, Orion is the the guy for the, the sort of the Wood Elves themselves, and then there's... Oh, I've forgotten Darthu, I've forgotten the name of the, the, the Treath Oak legendary lord. Basically, he's the oldest tree in the world, which is a cool backstory, I guess. Depending on which legendary lord you get, you can purchase, at will, units from that particular roster, if you have the, the, the right buildings anyway. However, if you want to- At will, so is that like the Vampire Count's um, raised dead spouts at Odyssey? For but trees say and you're, stuff. you've picked Orion, the kind of Wood Elf legendary lord, but you want to get some tree thought units in your army to give it a bit more, just make it a little more well-rounded, I guess. You need to spend a new resource called Amber. Now, Amber is something you can only acquire by taking over enemy regions on the campaign map, and the Wood Elves, by the way, can control every single uh, region in the game. They're the first faction, the first race to be able to do this, which is exciting. However, they can't really build much when... Oh, so they can actually capture every point on the map. That's amazing. It's the first one to... Yeah, like you said, it's the first one to actually be able to do that. When they capture a region. However, they get this Amber Without resource, mods. and Amber can be spent to acquire these different units and make more well-rounded armies, which is really useful. However, you'll also, if you're playing the Grand Campaign, need the Amber to improve the Oak of Ages, which is this like, sort of like wonder building that you've got back at home, and that's actually how you win the game, and it requires an awful lot of Amber to get to its final stage, which will win the game, but you're only getting one Amber per region that you control. So think about that. You're constantly going to have this choice running in the back of your mind about whether or not you want to make better armies, essentially, or try and win the game, and yeah, that's going to be a trade-off that, that's running throughout the Wood Elf campaign so not only are they different in battle they've also got this brand new idea running through their campaign map stuff as well this is the thing that i like about total war warhammer and maybe the beastmen were a little bit of a misstep here uh, you could argue but the thing i really liked about their playable races so far is how completely and utterly different they all feel to play like the vampire counts can't use range units for example yet the wood elves have all these ranged options that's two very different kinds of playstyles, and i'm into that Yes. Anyway, if you'd like some more extended impressions, you can find them on the site. I also spoke to some of the directors from the Total War team about this sort of changing philosophy about how they approach designing races and factions and how that isn't just going to be limited to Total War Warhammer. It's going to feed into the historical games as well. And while we're speaking about the historical games, I've got a bit of news on that front as well. So, yeah, there'll be links in the video description. If you're on YouTube, if you're on the site, you're already there. Well done. Cool. Awesome. Oh, they look so cool. Right, let's have a look at the actual details about it, shall we? Get out there, we done. Right, so coming out 9th of December for me, of course, 8th of December in the UK. Oh, that price, guys. 2339. Ugh. 2599 for me normally. Jesus. Okay. That's expensive. Good lord. Okay. Uh, new Wood Elf race in the Grand Campaign, of course. New additional race specific currency, Amber, which he talked about. Wonder based campaign victory. So you can either use your Amber that you're going to acquire to try and win the game straight away or to upgrade your army. From Just from what he was saying, if you've gone, if you've picked like the the Dryad Legendary Lord or the Tree Legendary Lord, you basically only have access to the tree versions unless you build other buildings. And then to get like the elves, you've actually got to spend your Amber to recruit them. So that's pretty interesting if that's how it works. What else can conquer any region? Nice. Yep. So the two lords, Orion and. Dorthu, two new lord types, three new hero types, cool. Comprehensive army roster, which is basically what I want to have a look at. Adds additional campaign map to the game with unique seasons of revelations. Oh, awesome. 
Additional campaign map. Nice. New unique monster here. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. What we really want to have a look at is the roster, if we can. There we go. So unit roster. When certain structures have been built, Glade Guard, Deepwood Scouts, and Glade Riders may be recruited to fire three specialized ammunition types. Nice. So star fire shafts, you can fire fire damage. Um, Hagbane tips, you get poison damage. Or swift silver shards, you get magical damage. Nice. So you can equip all your current troops with whatever um, elemental damage, I guess, type you want. Nice. So melee infantry, we've got the Eternal Guard, and then Eternal Guard with shields. Ward Dancers, and the Ward Dancers with Spears. Wildwood Rangers, awesome. You expect Rangers to be a ranged unit, wouldn't you? Ranged Infantry, Glade Guard, and then two versions of Glade Guard. Deepwood Scouts, and then another version of Deepwood Scouts. And the Waywatchers, awesome. Merely Cav, Wild Riders, and then Wild Riders with Shields, so they must be the Stag Cavalry. Ranged Cavalry, oh my god. So the Glade Riders, so they are obviously the Stag version, I would guess. And then Hawk Riders, a flying range unit. Jesus. It's going to be so hard to deal with. Uh, Magical Cavalry, Sisters of the Thorn. Magical Cavalry, nice. Spirit units, Wooden Spirit units, Dryads, Treekin, and Treemen. So the Dryads are obviously the smaller version, the Treemen are the monster version. And then Monstrous units, you get the Great Eagle, awesome, and the Forest Dragon, which we've seen. Did we see the Great Eagle? I don't know. Can we have a look at some of these pictures? Can I have a look at a bigger version? Okay, so that's on the campaign map. Oh, so that's the other legendary lord. So that's the first guy, Orion, and then that's Dorothy. Oh my god, it looks so cool. Look at that sword. Holy hell. Ah, so, okay. So the new campaign map is under Grimhole. We know where that is. Um, and it's just explored this area a lot more. And that's the Oak of Ages. Awesome. Well, we knew they were going to start in that region anyway. But no, So that's the Dryads. That must be the Great Eagle, the Dragon. And that's either Darthu or that's one of the... Is it the Tree Men? Treekin? What are they called? What are they called? <laughs> I'm going to have to sort all this shit out. Okay. What are they called? Uh, Tree Man. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Wow. What are the heroes? The Spell Slingers, which is a mage. Branch Race, which is a melee and mage. Awesome. And Way Stalkers, which is a spy and ranged focus. Oh, that's so cool. So, new lords. What if armies may recruit two new lords to command their armies? Glade Lords and Tree Men. Okay, so they're basically the same version of the legendary lords, but downgraded a wee bit. So, that's Darthu. Oh, my God. And that's Orion, the King in the Woods. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know about that price. That's the only thing. I mean, it looks like we're getting quite a lot of content, and it looks obviously very, very good, but that price, guys. Ooh. It's a quarter of the price of the actual game. And we've already paid that once with the Beastmen, so we've basically paid 50% more to get two new races. I'm not saying the amount of content we get for it isn't worth it, but yeah, that price is expensive. All right, that'll probably be us for this episode. All right, guys. Um, well, it looks good. Um, like I say, it's just that price is really the only question mark. Anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your feedback, especially about the price and like the units and stuff that we're getting. Are we all excited for um, the what else? I am. Definitely, definitely. She said, I wouldn't even know which one I want to play. Probably, I want to play probably Dorothy first, get the treants and stuff, although the elves are pretty cool too. Mm, I don't know. All right, guys, love to know your feedback. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.